Hey, Rob and John and Matt, how y'all doing? We're doing great, sir. Uh, do you have an answer for your political future just yet? <laughs> I'm still involved and still swinging hard for West Virginia. A lot of good things have happened. You know, we did a lot, I think, working together in Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan counties. When you think about how much we were able to direct spending there, because I think answering the needs of what people need and versus what the federal government thinks you need is a little bit of difference. So about $4.8 billion since 2021 has come to the Eastern Panhandle, and I was very much involved in that and very happy to make those uh, requests that I think has helped a lot of people. That sounds like an answer of a person running for Senate. <laughs> well, let's just say it's an answer of a person still involved and concerned about our government, Rob, and what we're doing and what we're not doing. This dysfunction is not right. Uh, what I'm sick and tired of what, what you have to be sick and tired of seeing every day. We can do better than this, and we are better than this. We can become the country that we are, act in the way that we're doing right now. Uh, you know, I've never met the first person that was always wrong. Uh, I might have walked away too soon thinking they were crazy in a bed bug, but it was my fault uh, for not sitting there and talking more and trying to get more uh, input. But everybody has something to offer. My Republican friends uh, are not always wrong. They're not always right. Vice versa with their colleagues in the Senate uh, and the Democrats, they aren't either. The bottom line is they just can't figure out how to work together because the business model in Washington is to attack the other person or the other side, no matter what side you're on. The other side's got to be the villain, and you got to demonize it. That is not how we have become the country that we are, and you can't maintain that type of posturing and thinking that good things will happen. Your, your colleague, Senator Tuberville, has been holding up many of the nominations for some of our uh, more senior military positions and yeah. posts in the country, and some say that is weakening our national defense. Is it, in effect, doing that? I think it is, and I've talked to, to Tom. I know Tom Tuberville. I like him. We've been friends. We've worked together on different things. We have an NI bill right now. We're name, image, and likeness trying to put guardrails on uh, the uh, NCAA and the sports, college sports. So hopefully, you know, we can maintain that student athletes posturing there that I think is going to help them in life get a good education. But we've worked on that. But what he's doing here is, and, and I've talked to him every way possible to try to get him off the ledge, but it is what it is, you know, and I think there's going to be a vote on a rule change that one senator, when becomes of national interest, cannot hold up. It has to be brought to a vote. On the other hand, I blame Chuck Schumer for not bringing it to a vote soon. He could have brought to a vote, made a stay there over the weekend and wore everybody out until we got past this. This is what they're not willing to do. Bob Byrd was, a, was, was really, it was unbelievable when he was the majority leader Bob Byrd wanted to get something done. You weren't going home on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. You were staying there until you got your work done for the people of America. And we need to do more of that. We just can't run out of there on Thursday afternoon. Everybody's going home or going wherever they're going for fundraising and all the difference. I understand the need to campaign, but the bottom line is you have a responsibility to do your job. So on both ends of it, but 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 uh, Coach Tupperville, uh, we call him Coach, uh, it's time to let this go. It's over. It's over. Time to let it go. We need the military people to understand this is the promotions that they've been working towards. This is the life they've chosen to defend our country and to put their families and the kids not knowing where they're going to be in school, not getting a promotion, not getting leadership where it's supposed to be is wrong. And it does harm the national defense and the uh, what we need as far as to have the greatest military uh, in the world has to have the greatest leadership in the world. And that means promoting the people that have earned it. Matt Miller. What seems to be the biggest issue in that situation? Is it ideological that he doesn't want to make these moves? Not at all, Matt. Hey, Matt, what it's about basically is abortion, the abortion issue. Uh, when Roe v. Wade, and I'll be, I'm going to go on record and telling you this, you know, whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, Roe v. Wade, when it was the precedent law for 50 years, we figured out and learned how to navigate it. It wasn't good enough, and it was too much for others, but we navigated it. When all the guardrails came off and it was wide open, wild, wild west, and every state started adapt adapting different, different procedures and different, basically, rules and regulations, whether they would allow uh, for... Uh, no abortions whatsoever, or the six week or twelve weeks. I've heard so many different things. Uh, when it really came down to it, was is that 
uh, a lot of the bases are in red states that have been very restrictive upon that. So if you have, and since 1984, there was a, a ruling, uh, and even Joe Biden voted for it back there as a United States senator, the only abortions that could be uh, provided by the military in case of incest, rape, and life of the mother, which most people understand and agree to. And Tom would like to go back to that. Uh, I told him I would vote for that. I support that and to get a vote on that. But he had another wrinkle to that. And then he added that he said he wanted to repeal the ruling they put in. And I said, Tom, you're not going to get both. You can't repeal the rule and have a vote the same day, too. That's not. I said, just get the vote. If you pass it, then it repeals everything. And you go back to 84. They're hung up on those type of things, and it makes no sense what's whatsoever. And we moved three individually. But usually we got three, four hundred. We move them in block. And it would, I mean, you get nothing else done for the whole year if you're doing one at a time. So that has to be, that has to be secured and we have to move on. And I think even my Republican colleagues, enough's enough. They understand too. We all understand. Let's get it done. John Gilstrap. Good morning, Senator. <clears throat> Recent headlines have, have, been highlighting your conflict with the Biden administration or disagreement with the Biden administration over certain environmental regulations. Could you summarize those for us? Yeah. Hey, John, <clears throat> the Inflation Reduction Act became just a really a political football here. And the bottom line was, I want to say this, that's not a red bill. It's not a blue bill. And it's definitely not a green piece of legislation. It's in energy security. I worked for five years on my energy committee with my Republican colleagues to come up with things that need to be done. First of all, that bill pays down $238 billion on our debt. First time in 30 years we paid down debt off of a bill. You never hear the president say a word. We're producing more energy today than we ever have in the history of our country. We'll produce 4.6 billion barrels of oil. We'll produce 37 trillion cubic feet of gas. And we're shipping overseas LNG about $13.5 billion cubic feet a day. Uh, we've never done these figures before, and we're doing it cleaner than anywhere else in the world. But with that, we're investing in more clean technology for the future. And if we're able to mature, whether it be hydrogen or small modular reactors, uh, and we're putting more, we've doubled our wind and solar capacity. That's all they talk about. They're not telling you the balanced bill that we have. So when they start implementing, and they start implementing, leaning it towards more of the renewables and not sticking with dispatchable, which is 24-7, the energy that we need every day to be the superpower of the world and be able to run this greatest economy in the world. We're jeopardizing that, and I've gone completely crazy on them, and I've sued them and done everything else and, and stopped them, and we got the Mountain Valley Pipeline, and we're going to get a lot more, but we've got to continue to work and understand. We can walk and chew gum in America. We can produce the energy that we have, the good Lord gave us in our country, better and cleaner. And you cannot eliminate your way to a cleaner environment. You can innovate it, John. That's what we're doing. So it's uh, I'm totally watching everything they do, making sure they hold to the letter of the bill, and willing to sue. Right now there's a suit going on on how they were supposed to lease uh, oil and gas rights in the Gulf of Mexico. And my, my committee, and we wrote the bill, that we have oversight on that, and we made them fulfill the, uh, uh, the leasing. They can't put a windmill or a wind farm in the Gulf or a wind or solar farms on BLM lands unless we're, unless we're basically extracting the resources that we have under us. It's a balanced approach, and then as the new technology comes on, and if it can do exactly everything that we're doing with fossil, it'll replace it. But if you're taking something off because you don't like it, John, and you don't have anything to replace it, you're going to hurt a lot of people in America. Senator Joe Manchin, our guest here on the program. It looks like we are on a collision course at the end of this week for a government shutdown, Senator Manchin. And it appears that uh, there is a motivated group in the House uh, amongst the Republicans' Freedom Caucus. Uh, and with the urging of uh, former President Trump to, if you don't get everything you want, shut it down. Uh, it looks like that's going to happen. What are your thoughts on this, and do you see a way out of it? Well, the only way out of this is finally to come to your sense that you're going to have to have a bipartisan group moving forward. That means Kevin McCarthy is going to have to work with Akeem Get Jeffries to put a group together like they did when they passed, when they almost had to shut down three months ago, 
uh, the uh, FRA, uh, the Recovery Act, the Financial Recovery Act, uh, we did that in a bipartisan way. Over 300 Congress people voted for it. 150 Democrats, 150 Republicans. He can do the same thing with this. He's just not going to be able to continue to lead and try to get 218 Republicans when you're going to get 10 or 15 that want to hold you hostage. So we'll have to see what happens. But there's a pathway for it, and it used to be done. You heard of the days when Chip O'Neill used to work with President Reagan, and they worked back and forth together. And then this purity came in. That means if the Democrats are the majority in the House, they have to have 218 Democrats voting, or they don't have they don't pass a bill. And then the Republicans it started out with Dennis Hastert, and Republicans that was their mantra, has to be pure. Those days are gone. We have to work together, and that's in a divided country that we have right now in this toxic atmosphere. The only way you're going to change it is showing to do the best that you can for the United States, what you're supposed to be doing there, not for yourself or not for the political party. I'm so sick and tired of both parties taking the posture of putting themselves before our country that it's just unbelievable. So, yeah, they can do it. But if not, it'll be shut down or they'll have a temporary CR for a day or a week or two weeks and kick the can down down the street. Let me just tell you how what we should be doing. We should have a bipartisan, bipartisan bicameral fiscal responsibility committee and give us either three months or no more than six months to come up together working with recommendations. And you all were talking earlier. I heard you about certain things or the person that was talking before about certain things that should be eliminated. We should check for everything that's duplicity within agency to agency. We should basically get rid of the waste that we have in that. And there's an awful lot of waste when you see all the fraud going on and start getting our house in order because of $33 trillion, Rob, of debt, you can't continue to carry this debt. We're paying uh, over $600 billion a year now just on the interest for our debt. By next year, we could be paying more than we do to, to defend our country. We will not maintain, we will not be the superpower of the world if we continue down this path. And I'll never forget the first words I heard from um, Admiral Mike Mullen when I was first on in, uh, early January, I mean, it was early January of 2011, uh, and I'm on armed services, and I just came off of being governor for one and a half terms, and he says, uh, they asked him the question, what's the greatest threat the United States faces? And I'm thinking we're going to hear China, Russia, all the different places in the world that want to do us harm, and he says, it'll be the finances and the debt of this nation that will bring us down. It won't be another nation. It won't be another military might. They can sit back and watch us destroy ourselves from within. And I'm determined not to let that happen. We have got to get our house in order. Senator Manchin, thank you so much for your time. Any final words that you wanted to get across today? The only thing I want to make sure that all three of you know that this is still the greatest country on earth. There's not another, there's not another country in the world that can step up and take our place or that wants to take our place. They're not going to be the superpower of the world just from the super military might or your economy. You've got to have super compassion. There's not another country that steps up to the plate and helps feed the poor around the world when there's famine or basically cures the world when there's a pandemic with a, uh, with a vaccine. We're the ones that do that. That's why we're still the hope of the world. So don't ever give up on America because we're still the best of the best. Thank you, Senator Joe Manchin. Appreciate your time today, of course. Thank you all, guys. Keep, keep preaching the gospel as you do, and I appreciate you all being there every day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.